Welcome to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa Caprio. Do you believe in magic? What if you were told that all you had to do was get a little creative and work a magic spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Here on Postcards to the Universe, we will share manifesting, tips, postcards, creativity, abundance, and prosperity. Here is your host, Melissa Caprio. Hello and welcome to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa, creating the life you crave. Today is Wednesday, January 20th, 2021, and it's a big day today, especially if you're American, but I think all around the world it's a big day. So it's 1-20-20-21, which is also called a palindrome date. And that's not going to happen again, apparently, as I was reading, for a thousand years. It means it's the same exact date backwards. And I think that the inauguration falling on this date is very significant. It's a very lucky date indeed. Um, I have an amazing guest on today, someone I call my friend and brother, Ade Anafawoshe, and I'm going to bring Ade on in a few minutes, and we're going to focus on talking about transition, which I think is very poignant that this show fell on this date. Now, just to guys give you guys a little thing, um, I never plan these kind of things. That's how I know I'm divinely guided. It just it just kind of happens that way for me. Like I didn't say, oh, let's talk about this because it's going to be on the date of the inauguration. It just fell that way. So I think that that's really cool. So as you guys know, I've been listening to me now for a while. My show is not never political, but I do want to say something on this very significant day. Many people are singing and celebrating right now and feel a sense of relief and hope with this new administration coming into office. I want to hold an intention that this new administration will bring healing to our nation. And I am beyond proud to see our first woman and woman of color to be elected to the vice presidency. Congratulations, Kamala Harris. Young girls everywhere are watching you and seeing for maybe the first time what is possible for them. And to me, that's very powerful. And to our new president, Joe Biden, I want to say that I pray that you are able to lead our country to a new level of harmony and healing and that together we can move forward and take care of each other. Because as we know, what happens to the one happens to the whole and vice versa. And for those today who are not rejoicing, and there are many, I hope that you will find that your voices will be heard and that you will know that together is the only way we can move forward. I don't know how many of you um, around the world, I know a lot of people in America for sure, but got to watch today. And I have to say, I think out of everything I heard and watched, I was most blown away by Amanda Gorman, the 22-year-old poet. And her words were just incredible. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but if you have a chance, please go and listen to her or read what she wrote. It was so beautiful, so powerful. It gave me goosebumps. There were two sentences that stood out to me, and I want to share them with you guys. The first one is, our blunders become our burdens, but one thing is certain. If we merge mercy with might and might with right, then love comes our Love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright. thought that was just wow. And then the second one was what she ended with. The new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light. If only we're brave enough to see it. If only we're brave enough to be it. So powerful. Just so powerful that was. I swear that woman is amazing, and we are going to be seeing a lot more incredible things from her. I have no doubt. If you guys are looking for some inspiration and you're on uh, Facebook, you could come over to my public group, Postcards of Love, where we share inspirational stories, beautiful art, and photographs. And, of course, I'm always sharing adorable animal videos because I'm such an animal person. I can hear you, a day. <laughs> you're talking in the phone. I can hear your beautiful voice. <laughs> You can also find me all across social media platforms. I'm going to bring a day out here in a sec. I just love him so much. You guys are going to love him. Okay, so each week I share my Magic Monday message with an affirmation. And you can see the images that I use for these affirmations on all my social media. And this week's affirmation is, need we say more, discover. 
So what does that mean? Discover literally means find something or someone unexpectedly or in the course of a search. So I ask you today, especially today, what can you discover about yourself when you really look at your biases? And that applies in every area of your life, personally and today, politically. I'm hearing a little background noise. I don't know what that is. But anyway, I'm just going to keep going. What can you discover about some dichotomy or someone you would call an enemy or someone on the other side of the aisle, so to speak? I'm not going to preach or tell you how you need to think, but I will ask you to take a moment today to ask yourself, what do I need to discover that will help me move forward? And keep asking yourself that. I promise you will find that answers will show up for you. So be open and be willing to see something or learn something or appreciate something different that shows up in your life. And look for the gift in that. I think that's really important that we have to look for the gifts in, um, in, in things that we're discovering about ourselves or about other people because there's always gifts. Okay, so you guys know I always share who's going to be my guest on the next week's show. So next week I have on Jenny Zugner Johnson, who has been blessed with spiritual gifts of a connection with Mother Earth, the moon, the sun, stars, trees, waters, nature beings, elementals, and animals. And Jenny believes she was given by the creator. These gifts were given to her by the creator. She seemed to incorporate them in every essence of her being. It is Jenny's intention to offer assistance to those who cross her path and finding the ability to walk through challenges and a personal transformation of love, peace, truth, and harmony. And Jenny next week will help guide us on how we can tap into our connection with Mother Earth. So if you're interested in that, please join me next week for that. All right. Now to get to my amazing guest today, a day on a Fawoshe is a visionary channel, healer, intuitive, transformational agent, life coach, podcaster, artist, writer. The philosophy of self-empowerment is the thread that runs through all of the day's talks, workshops, healing sessions, and spiritual gatherings. For over 20 years, a day has devoted his life to being both a student and teacher of ancient wisdom. He is known for his optimism and ability to put people at ease while tapping into the inner wisdom of the soul. And you can find out more about Ade if you go to his website, www.lifecoachade.com. Welcome, my friend. I'm so happy to have you with me today. It's a big day of transition. (laughs) (laughs) You only can imagine what's going on back here. I can hear it. I'm like, what is he doing? I'm actually trying to keep still, but there's noise everywhere from my computer. I'm like, not now. (laughs) I'm laughing. I'm like, oh boy. I thought that was you, but that's okay. You know, they'll still hear me. That's fine. How are you doing? I am wonderful. Thank you for having me. And um, just, you know, it's a, you know, for me, I feel like it's a great day to be alive. And mm-hmm. some people may say it's the worst time to be alive, but there's a lot going on. We're in mm-hmm. the midst of a transition, mm-hmm. and so there's and they're happening side by side. You know, you we're going through the transition, and transformation is happening. But all in all, you know, I'm mm-hmm. using it using it as a spiritual practice. It's an opportunity yeah. to see what I believe, what I know is true, and apply mm-hmm. what I know is true. Yes. Well, I know that about you. So, but a lot of people are going to be hearing you today for the first time. So why don't you just share a little bit about you, your background and who you are? A hmm. little bit about me. Let's keep it a little, little bit, a <laughs> little bit, little bit. Cause we could talk for hours. You and I well, you know that <laughs> I'll do it this way. You've read the bio. People can find mm-hmm. out more information about my, on my website. But what mm-hmm. I will say is the core of my work is mm-hmm. three three pillars: love, okay. healing, and transformation. Mm-hmm. Um, love sometimes we kind of see it just through romantic relationship, mm-hmm. and we think love is this conditional thing that comes and goes every now mm-hmm. and then. What I'm talking about is unconditional love. What I call matured love. Mm-hmm. It's the kind yeah. of love 
where I choose to love, even when it's difficult to love. Yeah. <laughs> and so my work is like connecting people with, there is a part of us, there's a, our, our true essence, nature, mm-hmm. is unconditional love. And the healing is a process of returning to our true essence. The healing is not in the future. It's mm-hmm. right here. So by correcting our perception, our consciousness, our mindset, we return to our true essence, which leads to a transformation. So the three pillar is love, healing, and transformation. I love supporting people. I support people to integrate spirituality and humanity. They're not separate. If you want mm-hmm. to live whole, <laughs> then you need to integrate yeah. both. That's what I do. No matter what I'm doing, you will see those things like showing up in one way one way or another. Oh, I know that about you because a day and I have known each other now, I guess like four or five years now. Yeah. And he always calls me out when I say something and he calls me out in the most <laughs> loving and respectful way. <laughs> oh Lord. And I love it. I mean, I might not love it in the moment, but it's he's right. You know, he'll just make me stop and ask me the question to repeat the statement I just made that may not be so loving. <laughs> you know, I'm laughing because I, I was talking to a friend today and I mentioned our conversation and I was to, uh, my conversation with you or times that we mm-hmm. talk. Because mm-hmm. when, I, when I'm hearing what you're saying, I'm like, yes, and mm-hmm. and you say, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and I know exactly what that means. So I slowly dial it back. It's like, she got it. <laughs> yeah, because it's not easy, right? But if we're trying, or if we're not trying, if we're growing and we're, we're looking for the deeper meanings and we know that we're all connected, then whatever I say, whatever I do affects you. You're across the pond right now. You know, whatever you do or say affects me and everybody else so we have to be responsible for i don't know who said it but be responsible for the energy that you bring into the yeah. room right yeah it was a jew mm-hmm. bolty taylor i think her name mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. um and, and the thing is it's a choice mm-hmm. that, and that's the thing that i think we sometimes miss i do i need sometimes need people to remind me to come back to myself mm-hmm. but as you said earlier looking for gifts it's mm-hmm. a choice so mm-hmm. if I look around and say, I don't see any gift. What do you mean look for gift? How can I find a gift in all of this? It's because I'm not looking. Right. There is a gift in everything. So it's a choice to change our mindset. It's a choice to change the way we are looking at what is happening. No matter how bad it is. And I'm not playing. Well, I mean, we're living in a time that is very challenging. People mm-hmm. are losing loved ones. People the mm-hmm. People have businesses that are closing down. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's difficult. And we can still choose to see things differently. We can still choose. And even when we say, I don't have a choice, Mm -hmm. that itself is a choice to believe that I don't have a choice. You understand? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I understand. And it's a practice. It takes practice. Mm -hmm. I've been listening to Carolyn Mace a lot in the last couple of weeks, and she talks about building your spiritual backbone. And Mm. that's true. You know, we really have to practice these things. It's like, you know, you don't just come out of the womb learning to walk, right? You got to (laughs) crawl first. You know, you move around, you crawl, then you learn to walk. You're wobbly. You fall down a lot. It's the same thing when you're talking about your 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 emotional energy, your spiritual self. It's a practice. Yeah. So it's something we have I to do every day. I love that analogy. I've never seen it like that before. When you say we don't come out the room learning to walk. Right. And <laughs> there is an impulse mm-hmm. urging us to walk. That's why a baby right. will get up and fall. Right. There's an right. impulse to saying get up and they fall. They get back up again. So same thing is true for us. When we fall because we can't find the gift, we mm-hmm. don't think that we have a choice. There's an impulse saying, get up, look for it. There's a, there's a gift here. You have a choice. I don't have a choice. Can you imagine an infant, a baby, saying, <laughs> I can't walk. Uh, I'm not going right. to try again. All right. There's an impulse in them right. that's calling it, it, them higher. There is because they fall a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> they get hurt a lot. They fall, they cry, mm-hmm. they shake it off, and they try again. So you're right. There's a deeper impulse, to, you know, yes. in there that's it, calling them to move forward. We're always being called to move forward, even though yes. a lot of us don't want to see the calling. And many mm-hmm. of us won't answer the call. Mm-hmm. Right? Because we have to change. <laughs> the, 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 the calling right. is mm-hmm. calling us up. It's calling us out. And that means we have to be different, do different in order to have a different experience. And sometimes it's comfortable to just do, this, do things the way we've been doing it. So mm. when the call comes, mm-hmm. there's an inner knowing that we have to change. Right. We have to be different. And who am I going to be if I change? Would I still have the same friends? Would mm-hmm. people see me as crazy or weirdo? Mm-hmm. And so yeah. sometimes we're scared of our own power, or what, what, was, what is possible for us. So we'd say, well, if it wasn't for that person, this person, or that thing, that situation, I will be okay. No, those people, places, and things are helping us to respond to the call, to the impulse from within to be more. And that's what gets us through the process of transition Mm -hmm. so we can be available for the transformation. Right. Right. And that's what I want to talk about because I have, because you have to have the transition before the transformation. But before we Mm -hmm. dive into that, (laughs) we're at the first break. So let's take our break here and then we'll, I know, and we'll come back in two minutes. Stay tuned. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Hi, I'm Melissa Caprio from Postcards to the Universe, creating the life you crave. Do you believe in magic? What if I told you all you had to do was get a little creative and work a dream spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Well, guess what? I've got the spell for you. Postcards to the Universe, a global movement for manifestation, is a casting magical tool for you to use whenever you want. How does living in passion sound to you? Join me in my movement where you get to create in the magical playground. Let's think outside the box and do some playful conjuring. By casting out our desires with a manifesting postcard, we explore our hearts and allow the alchemy of our dreams to appear. And don't forget to tune in each week here on Ohm Times Radio with my show, Postcards to the Universe, Creating the Life You Crave at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. I share tips on creativity, abundance, and prosperity, and you will be introduced to the coolest guests, trailblazers, mystics, and creatives who enrich our lives. The United States has the highest rate of incarceration in the world. At the Equal Justice Initiative, we believe mass incarceration has to end. There is this presumption of dangerousness and guilt that gets assigned to black and brown people. We have to confront our history of racial injustice and commit to a new era of truth. There's something better waiting for us, something that feels more like freedom. Truth can inspire change. Please learn more at EJI.org. Welcome back. So I have my wonderful friend on today, Ade Anifawoshe. I say his name correctly. I practice that a lot to get it right. (laughs) We're talking about today's a very special day. It's transition in America. And we're just happen to be talking about transition and basically transition is change. And we were saying before, we're talking about change. People hate change. 
Like, avoid it at all costs. And the only thing that's constant is that things are always going to change. Mm-hmm. Isn't that crazy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Humans are crazy. <laughs> yeah, we are. How did... I, I said, I used to say, some people may have a different opinion about this, but for me, I don't see God as a human being. If mm. God was human, mm-hmm. God would be in counseling a therapy like I don't understand. <laughs> they pray they want a new house. They pray they want a new job, but they just complain. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I like that. That's so true, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Right? Oh my God. Well, what is transition? I mean, you've had so much transition in the last couple of years, but what does transition like mean to you? Transition to me is really a dying. It's a dying process. Mm-hmm. Is where what 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 is is dying, mm-hmm. and then eventually what was no longer exists. Mm-hmm. So, and every day we're really in a transition process. We're dying every day when we go to sleep. We mm-hmm. we can choose to die from moment to moment. Now, if you think of the season, four mm-hmm. seasons. There's mm-hmm. always something happening, even if it doesn't look like it. But we notice it when it's really like super serious. Like between now, it looks like nothing's happened to the trees. Mm-hmm. But there's a process going on. You know, right. we say the leaves are dying. Yeah, they're dying, but that doesn't mean they still don't have a function because right. they go back into the earth and mm-hmm. feed the same tree that they fell from. Right. So in the dying process, there's a renewing happening. Mm-hmm. Now, how we deal with with the dying process mm-hmm. determines how we experience, if you will, the rebirth. You know, as you're talking, we may see the gift or not see the gift. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you've been talking about the inauguration. There's, they're always talking about peaceful transitioning mm-hmm. of power. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, some people might say there was nothing peaceful about that. And some people might say it was very peaceful. Mm -hmm. It's all about perspective, really. But there is a movement that has always happened, especially when we're living from a place, uh, when we're living consciously awake, Mm -hmm. when it's about spiritual expansion. The transition is to let go. Like for me, I'm moving through a lot of new things. I've moved home. Mm -hmm. I'm in a new place now for the past three days. And I'm still adjusting because I have to say, where did I put that which box? And, mm-hmm. you know, I, it, where's, you know, I'm having to over, not overthink, but think a little bit more than I would at my old place because I know right. exactly where it is. So uh, during that transition, it really helps to be present. And when yeah. we are visioning, affirming, praying, um, setting intentions, we are setting ourselves up to go through a transition. It's moving from one stage to another, one stage changing form. Now, the transformation part of it, really, we can't really, we can prepare for it, but we can't make it happen. However, how we move through the transition process makes it mm, determines how we experience the transformation. They, so we can have a transformation and end up being bitter. Right. Because we think, that's the worst thing that could ever happen to me. Mm-hmm. She mistreat me and she is the witch from hell. Mm-hmm. Oh, I and a lot say, of us yes. go there. A lot of us go to bitter. Yes, so, yeah. because it's easy. Mm-hmm. Because if I right. blame her, if I blame him, if I blame mm-hmm. them, right. then I... I I don't have to be responsible for my own choices, my own actions, because it takes a certain kind of courage to say, you know what? I added, I contributed to this breakdown. There were things that I did. There are things that I said. There are thoughts that I was thinking that caused this. Now, I may not be the one that walked out. (laughs) I may not be the one that took the money and left. I may not right. be the one that caused the accident right? or the, if the person wasn't drunk, there wouldn't have been an accident. Maybe I didn't pay attention. Right. But it's not about blame. 
it's we we, we gotta um, appreciate the human experiences and understand sometimes you don't know what's going to happen, but through our spiritual practice, we allow ourselves to be available for the human experiences because you probably heard me say this because I say it a lot. I said life is not for wimps, and a spiritual practice is for gladiators. <laughs> because yes. to stay awake, to take responsibility, whew, it's not for the yeah. faint of heart. No, <laughs> no it's not. No, it's mm-hmm. not for the faint of heart. And I have found that um, a lot of people, and, and I was guilty of this too, and I think I've gotten so much better at it. Yeah, and I'll just use the, um, the pandemic as what I'm talking about in reference to what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. There's so many people that I hear bitching and bitching and moaning and moaning. I can't go anywhere. I'm sick of this. I'm over it. Ah, blah, 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 Mm. you know, whatever. And, and I've said to me, well, you don't ever seem to be, you know, you know, upset. And I never hear you complain. And I said, because if I'm complaining about what is, what is, this is what is Mm -hmm. right now, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be causing myself added suffering to what is, I have to accept that this is where we are, and I know, and once I accept it, that cuts down, that resistant, I tell everybody, stop being resistant to what Mm. is your reality right now. This is your reality. (laughs) Accept it. Know that it will, it will transition. Just have faith that that will happen, and and find what you can do in that space. And that's why, yes, of course I want to go out. Of course I want to travel. Of course I want to socialize. But I know that right now it's not an option and I don't fight Mm -hmm. the fact there's nothing I can do about that. And I think Mm -hmm. a lot of people that what causes them a lot of pain and anguish when something comes in their life that hits them that they need to change or transition. They get so upset because they're resisting what is really going on. They're resisting the reality of the situation instead of accepting it. I think acceptance and like you said, yes. being in the present moment really yeah. cuts down that that anguish and that pain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At least for me. Indeed. Yeah, it does. And I, and I don't want people to think it's this sort of some kind of mastery. So I've no. learned to accept <laughs> all of life. I, right. I mean, sometimes You're I You're always learning, of course. <laughs> yes. Of course, yes. But the acceptance, it's almost like if you bought a new car... It Mm -hmm. smells nice on the inside. It's shiny. Mm -hmm. But then one day you want to travel. Or you just want to go to work. And you Mm -hmm. come back, there's there's bugs on the windshield, all kind of stuff. I'm not going to go, I can't believe my car is so dirty. It was new last week when I bought it. (laughs) Right. I just go to the nearest place to detail it. Right. So the, the the spiritual practice is a constant, like a shower for the spirit, mm-hmm. for the mind. And acceptance is, I may be in a place where maybe in the moment I didn't accept it, I blame somebody, or if they didn't put that there, I wouldn't have knocked it over. Right. But the more we do our spiritual practice and have hold the intention to dance with life rather than resist life, something mm-hmm. in us, intuitively, your guides, your ancestors, mm-hmm. your angels will nudge you, like, hmm, acceptance? Mm-hmm. And acceptance is recognizing that what is, this is what's happening. And right. if we're not willing to look at what is happening and accept it, we can't see the gift. We can't even access a choice because we already feel like we're being oppressed by what is happening. But if we right. recognize this is happening, I really don't like it. And it's fine to be mad. It's fine to mm-hmm. judge. It's fine to blame. It's, just, it's not good or bad. But if you right. move in and buy, the, buy a mansion in that consciousness, it's dangerous. Mm-hmm. But we're still going to learn what we need to learn. Wherever, mm-hmm. Whether we uh, enjoy mm-hmm. or we're just pissed off. But yeah. there's a sort of life is calling us to wake up. Mm-hmm. To show up and yield to the call, as you were saying earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a daily practice. There is no destination. We're not trying to outmatch anybody. Mm-hmm. It's just I'm doing everything in my power. 
that brings me peace. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that means I need to call a friend. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that means I want to listen to music, go to YouTube. Sometimes it may mean journaling mm -hmm. or praying, affirmative prayer or mm -hmm. meditating or going for a walk. You know, I had to do that earlier and I, because where I'm living now, I'm close to the ocean. And I went, it's rainy and windy, and it was, the waves were crashing, and it was just like nice. the power. And I just released the stuff that I've been carrying all day, things that I've been mm -hmm. carrying about myself, judging myself, mm -hmm. thinking that I don't have enough time to do the things that need to be done. Mm -hmm. I released into the ocean and, and, nice. and affirmed what is true about me. So it's a daily practice. So that we can dance with life, we can cooperate with life rather than resist life. And mm, I love that. that posture, if you will, that stands, mm -hmm. allows for the uh, transformation to maybe be a little bit easier. You talked about um, mm -hmm. some of the transformation transitions I've been through. You know, I used mm -hmm. to live in America for for the better part of 25 years. And long story short, well, I didn't short, realize that you were here that long for some reason. I was. I didn't, think it was, I mean, I didn't realize it was almost twenty-five years. Wow. Yeah, I was back and forth. There were mm -hmm. there were times when I lived in UK and then came back to America. Oh. For for the most part, at the, the well, the last twenty-five years up until twenty eighteen mm -hmm. was in America. Mm -hmm. So I was I'm Nigerian. I was born here in UK. I'm saying here, like everybody knows where I'm at. Right, right. You're in the UK. In the, in the United UK. Kingdom. Um, and living in America, I was, married to, I was married to an American citizen. And over that time, we just never completed my um, green card process for many reasons. Money, we broke up for a while, and then we got back sure. together, tried to make it work. Long story short, it didn't happen. I got stopped by Border Patrol on my way to San Francisco. They took me off Greyhound bus, and next thing I know, I was in a detention center in New Mexico, thinking, oh, you know, I really right. hate this experience, but mm, I'll be gone, I'll be back in Atlanta in no time. I was in there for 40 days and 40 nights. Wow. So, anybody that knows the story of Jesus the Christ, mm. um, would know that he often goes in the desert to meditate. Mm. <laughs> to come back to himself. <laughs> and they will always talk about 40 days and 40, 40 nights. Signif yeah, 40 That's significant. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I later realized that I call it my government retreat because I realized that was a, a moment for me, an appointment, a retreat that was set by my soul that I had no idea was going to happen. Because if I knew it was going to happen, I'd be like, nope. Nope. And right. <laughs> not doing it. I, I like, <laughs> yes, transformation and accepting it all and looking uh, for the gift. Yeah, yeah. Great. But nope, I am happy yeah, where this I'm isn't at. A, and he's not talking about a spa retreat either. Because when you say <laughs> retreat, people get this vision in their head like, ooh, you know, you're getting massages. And yeah, it's not like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was a spa center called a detention center <laughs> where you're told right. when to eat, when to wake yeah. up. Wow. handcuffed and it's I mean my first panic yeah. um, panic attack was when I was moved from one detention center to another mm -hmm. I thought I knew what a panic attack was and when it was happening to me I didn't even know what it was I just know that I felt like my breath was drowning me because they oh, handcuffed God. me wow. Wow. Um, my wrist and then they had the mm -hmm. ankle chain Jeez. and they put us there was like five of us in this little van it's a, like one of those 12 seated vans, minivans, mm -hmm. but the space in there was small and you cannot open the van from the inside. So oh, basically, yeah. I can feel it in my chest as oh, you're talking yeah, about it. Yeah, my right. breathing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know what yep. was happening. I just knew I felt like I'm going to die. I wow. just, I, I was like, okay, God, I really need help here. I started counting one, two, mm -hmm. three, so to, just, to distract myself. That didn't work. Sure. I started reciting the ABCs. That didn't work. I tried to pray. That didn't work. I start to visualize being out of the van and, mm -hmm. you know, being in a garden with clouds and the sun is shining. <laughs> didn't work. Wow. And then I just surrendered. Mm. And I said, 
God, please put me to sleep. Ooh, I'm feeling as I talk. <laughs> I yeah, was like, God, sure. put me to sleep. Put me to sleep. Please put me to sleep. I kept saying, put me to sleep. Because I knew that was the only way I can get through it. Right. I eventually fell asleep. There's more wow. to that story. Oh, I'm sure. But <laughs> but what ended up happening when I woke up, we were next detention center, which was an, that's a whole other story. Anyway, I was in the detention center 40 days, 40 nights. And on the 40th night, I was sent back to UK. I didn't. I wasn't planning to come back over here. I'm just right. like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a British citizen, uh, whatever. People, people used to ask me, why did you come to America? I'm like, why not? Because my relationship to this country back then was like, oh, mm-hmm. you know, I think how some people feel about America sometimes, right. <laughs> you know. But in coming back here, I've seen the, the divine order in it. Mm-hmm. The, part of the process was hard and difficult. And sure. part of that process was transformative, where I actually right. coached one of the guards who was afraid he wanted to start his own business, but he said he was afraid. So he was telling me this because he knew I was a coach. So I coached wow. him. And at the end of the conversation, because <laughs> I said, I'm in here, I might as well use my skills. And wow. after the conversation, he said, you know what? I'm going to go for it because I want to leave a different legacy for my children than my parents did. And I remember feeling like, if this is the reason I'm in here, I am grateful. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh, my God. A day. That's incredible. I did not hear that part of that story, but um, this is a perfect time because we're up for our second break. So let's do it now because I want to dive into more when we come back. So we're going to take our second break right now. Stay tuned, guys. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Imagine yourself being transported to India, to the banks of the Ganga, and an ashram in Rishikesh. Visualize that you are welcome to satsang with an American sannyasi who shares the wisdom of her guru. Your visualization has manifested. Join Satvi Bhagawati Saraswati for inspiration and transformation every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. Hi, I'm Melissa Caprio from Postcards to the Universe, creating the life you crave. Do you believe in magic? What if I told you all you had to do was get a little creative and work a dream spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Well, guess what? I've got the spell for you. Postcards to the Universe, a global movement for manifestation, is a casting magical tool for you to use whenever you want. How does living in passion sound to you? Join me in my movement where you get to create in the magical playground. Let's think outside the box and do some playful conjuring. By casting out our desires with a manifesting postcard, we explore our hearts and allow the alchemy of our dreams to appear. And don't forget to tune in each week here on Ohm Times Radio with my show, Postcards to the Universe, Creating the Life You Crave at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. I share tips on creativity, abundance, and prosperity, and you will be introduced to the coolest guests, trailblazers, mystics, and creatives who enrich our lives. These are the sounds of a dinner. A dinner that almost didn't happen. A dinner now served, thanks to people like you. Due to COVID-19, 17 million more Americans may face hunger. Feeding America is helping our neighbors in need. And if you're able, you can too. Donations are being accepted at feedingamerica.org slash coronavirus. Brought to you by the Ad Council and Feeding America. 200 Food Bank Strong. (laughs) 
love having a day on. We just laugh. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> we talked during the commercials and we laughed. Um, okay, so we were talking about you and your major. I mean, what happened to you is major. You know, like a lot of people a transition, the biggest transition in their life is, you know, they went from one job that they didn't like to another job they didn't like. Not that there's, I'm not taking away that that sucks for that person. <laughs> but, right. but it's a little bit different than, you know, you're thinking you're going on a spiritual, you were going, you were on a bus and you were going to like a spiritual event and then you get picked up by ICE. And then Mm -hmm. thrown into a detention center for 40 days. Okay, so you get back to the, they take you back, they put you on a plane, they take you, you're back into the UK, right? So Mm -hmm. how, how, like, what was, what was going on there? Because you hadn't lived there for 25 years. Well, I've been back in in that 25 years I've lived. So this happened in 2018, right? Mm-hmm. I lived, I came back um, to UK, I think it was 2000, it was 2002. Mm-hmm. And I was here, um, yeah, I think in 2002. So I was here up until 2017. But in that time, my former mm-hmm. wife and I would go, we'd come back to Atlanta and mm. then come back to the UK. We had a business so here. So it was in the UK. a back and forth. It was like a back yeah, and forth. Yeah, it was a back and forth. Okay. There were times where I was there for a long time in America, mm-hmm. and then there were moments where I was here for a little bit longer. So I really, you know, I tell people I'm a Nigerian man born in UK. Mm-hmm. No, actually, I'm a Nigerian man conceived in Germany. Born in UK <laughs> and feels more at home in America. <laughs> That's I know it's unbelievable. <laughs> yes. Um, wow. You know, one of the gift of the mm-hmm. spiritual tools when practiced, because I feel like the daily spiritual practice is a spiritual gym. It's, it, that's mm-hmm. what it is for me. I get to mm-hmm. work work out spiritually, so that when life shows up unexpectedly, mm-hmm. that I've developed my core, my spiritual core my muscles to be able to be flexible um, right. when life happens. So by the time I came back, after all mm-hmm. I've gone through, mm-hmm. whew, yeah, um, I'm just thinking of some of the stories that I have. I think it was maybe two weeks or so mm-hmm. before I was returned back to the UK. And they were telling me, I think I said this earlier that, you know, I don't have access to, I can't see a judge um, Mm -hmm. or go to court. Mm Because one of the things is, one of the options that would have been available is go to court and they may have moved it to Atlanta. So I would have gone back to Atlanta. All right. Um, So I was, but once I was told that I don't have access to that, I was like, okay. And the only option I had was to be returned back to mm-hmm. the UK even though I was married to an American citizen I have family over there it was straight mm-hmm. back to um, is the United Kingdom and I was devastated mm-hmm. and then I just kind of went within mm-hmm. and I took a deep breath and I said okay God if going back to England is the highest and best if that's the best result I surrender. Mm. I surrender. I'm not going to resist. I don't want to go, but right. I, I surrender. That decision, that mm. choice, changed me in ways that I, I didn't even know. And I can even mm. say, I'm just realizing that now. Because had I not surrendered, mm-hmm. I would have come back here be mad, upset, bitter. Right. But because I gave it up, it's like this is this is this is not something I can control. This is bigger right. than me. Right. It's bigger than you. And I have a choice how to be. Mm-hmm. So coming back was like, okay, this is where I was born. I have family here. Thank God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not right. like I didn't have family and I didn't because it didn't matter if I if I didn't have family and have nowhere to stay. They weren't going to do anything about that. I get it. No, I'm right. not blaming them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're not going to say, well, we want to make sure you go somewhere. To... No, they just right. get me out of the country. They just get you out of the country. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. So in coming back with that perspective, I knew that a transformation is happening. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know what it was going to look like because you never know what it's going to look like. Right. Um, one of the gifts 
of the transformation was really having an experience of my country, my culture, my lineage, my ancestors mm -hmm. in a new way. Because I know as a Nigerian, mm -hmm. though I'm born in England, mm -hmm. that my, that I, my lineage, my biological lineage is rooted in being an African. Right. And that's something that I've always wanted to connect to. And it was not until I actually got to America that I had a new way of looking at African spirituality, which used to be judged and still demonized. Yeah. But America gave me the gift to see it differently. So when I came back, I knew that something is happening and it can't be anything but good. So that mindset is what helps me navigate being here. One of the, get, one of the many gifts was my father. Mm -hmm. um, I had my experience with my father. I hadn't seen my dad maybe about eight years, maybe okay. longer, uh, until that time. And when I came back, or when I was shoved back or kicked out, <laughs> he came to Nigeria. He came to UK because he comes, mm -hmm. he comes to visit and then goes back to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. and, and I really felt like I got to meet my father in a new way. Like, yeah. man to man, mm -hmm. grown up, me clear about how I see the world, my own, how I see the world and my own beliefs about life. There's some things that conversations we've had before that I wished he accepted the way I saw things that haunted me for a while. Mm -hmm. But when I came back in 2018, well, he got here 2019, mm -hmm. I was, I was, I was different. I was rooted yeah. in what I believe and what I see, what I know. And it didn't matter to me if he accepted my point of view. And out of that, I interviewed my dad on my show, on my radio show. I've never interviewed my dad. I've been doing radio for over 20 years or so. And it came to me. Spirit told me to interview him. I was nervous. Sure. Because I, I wasn't sure. You know, I was nervous about the whole thing, period. Interviewing my father. Of course. I can, yeah, of course. I can interview I anybody. I I get it. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I get it. But my father, right, who I sometimes I feel like maybe he doesn't quite get my work, mm -hmm. and sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like he does, but I was able to have that conversation and interview him and ask questions that I hadn't asked before, and it was a gift. It made me not a, not a better man. It's almost like sometimes this it, as we move through life, mm -hmm. that that some void. There's a hole. Right. There's a sense yeah. of belonging that we're struggling with. But having a conversation with my father on my platform, asking him questions, healed me beyond ways I could put in words. Wow. You know, it That's was very just, powerful. it was a gift. Yeah. And my sister, she loves to cook. My younger sister, she loves to cook. And I tell people, I have had more Nigerian food particularly mm -hmm. in the last two years than I've had in maybe in 30 years because she is always cooking Nigerian food and I, I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that even helped me in my process of belonging because I struggled with being, um, sure. you know, African heritage, born in right. UK, living in America. Living in America. Identity sure. issue. I was yeah, like, like where do know, I belong? Where do, where I, belong? do I belong? Yeah. I've been gone mm -hmm. so long from Nigeria that can I really speak as a Nigerian? Mm -hmm. I've been gone so long from UK and uh, my relationship with UK ain't all that. Can I really talk as a British person? Right. I'm living in America that feels at home, like home, mm -hmm. but I wasn't born here. So I can't talk like I know what I'm talking about, even though I know what I know. Right. So that sense of where do I belong? And so in coming back here and writing my book, where I'm still writing it, mm -hmm. it's there's been major transformation about how I see myself. Well, I'm glad and you brought up the, the things, book. I'm glad you mm -hmm. brought up the book because you felt called after you got settled. Because, you know, it just doesn't happen like one, two, three. You know, we need to process <laughs> things that happen to us. Yes. You decided, hmm, maybe I need to tell my story. Because there's a, something important here that other people are going to resonate with. So yes. now you started your story and you're telling it and you're writing your book. So, all right. So, good. So, tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, 
life always gives you what you need. So, mm-hmm. people were telling me, oh, you're a coach, you help people, you're a spiritual teacher. Oh, you can make this story when I was in the detention center. You can write a mm-hmm. book and make money, or this can mm-hmm. be a movie. Sometimes I'm like, shut the flip up, please. I just <laughs> want to get the hell out of here. I don't right. want to hear that crap. <laughs> I'll worry about that later. <laughs> it's like, just get me out. Get me out. That's all I'm interested in. Anyway, that didn't happen. They didn't get me out until it was mm-hmm. time. When I came back, I toured around with writing a, writing a book. But then I sort of like still finding my way, dealing with, you know, licking my wounds. And our mutual friend, Diana Silver, mm-hmm. we were talking. And she said, so, Ade, what you going, what you doing? And she mentioned, you know, you say, are you going to write a book about your experience? And I was like, oh, I don't know, maybe. And as I was talking to her, it got very clear. I just mm-hmm. heard it. I knew I was supposed to write a book. Mm-hmm. And I started the process and other things fell in place. And the process of writing the book. Now, I knew I wasn't going to be writing about how, you know, the... Trump is this, mm-hmm. or the eyes did this to me. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't interested in that story because that's not right. my story. Right. I learned so much about myself through that horrible experience. That's a gift. I found mm-hmm. a gift. And I wasn't sure what it was going to be. However, when I started, it, it, it tapped into something that I've been dealing with for my life, which you mentioned earlier this idea of belonging, mm-hmm. identity. And right. when I started writing, the things that were coming out surprised me. It was healing. Oh, I bet. It was I healing. can't wait to read it. <laughs> I can't wait for uh, it to come out so I can read it. Yes. But I know. I can imagine. I can imagine. Mm. It was very healing. And I'm sure a lot of it was, you know, must have brought up a lot of pain, too, writing some parts of it. <clears throat> yes. And I'm writing stories that involve other people. That when it's done, I'm going to have them read it, and they may say, no, take it out. I don't know. They might say, mm-hmm. it's okay. Maybe I'll have to change names. But I'm writing about mm-hmm. my life, and I'm writing about my experience. So that, right. th- so I'm going to hold to that. But what it has done is stories that I didn't give voice to, that I didn't mm-hmm. give space to, and now have an opportunity to come up. I'm seeing parallels in things that happened 30 years ago that I didn't even know as I write. Mm-hmm. I I. One of the healing things that came out of writing the book for me was one day I was just writing about my experience and I was writing and kept writing. You know, anybody that writes kind of understands or journaling. Sometimes things will come out of the blue. And I was finishing, it wasn't really a chapter, but I was just writing because I started to do this daily writing. Mm -hmm. And at the end of what I was writing, it came to me, said, I was was lost, Mm -hmm. now I am found. Mm. And what I realized in that moment I, I wrote, you know, I used to look, I used to ask myself, where's home? I'm actually paraphrasing now because it was much more powerful than what I'm saying. I could sure. feel it. Oh, but okay. anyway, I said, I used to try to figure out where home is. Now I realize that truly my home is where my heart is. Mm. And it's wherever I call home. If I choose to call America home, that is home. If I choose to call UK home, if I choose to call all the places I've lived home, that is home. And do you know what was powerful about that? It wasn't an intellectual thing. It right. was like there was a voice, a voice that I've, that's that been once um, invisible, mm-hmm. had an opportunity to express itself. And that voice was speaking and it was healing me. So well, the I transition led right. to the transformation of <laughs> who I beautiful. was then. Yeah. Well, I think that's why it needs to be written and it needs to be shared because I think a lot of people probably feel the same way. They don't know where they belong. Where do I belong? Mm-hmm. Where mm-hmm. do I belong? And I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to maybe say, I don't know if this is true, but maybe people of color feel that more than white people. Oh, God, yes. You know, you know <laughs> yes. I can't say, I mean, I can't, I'm, you know, I'm white, so I can't say that. So, you know, <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I don't want to put words in a mouth. But I'm a, <laughs> yeah, I'm don't just, put words in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> right. but, but here's but the thing, you know, particularly, it's a good point you say that, I just mm-hmm. want to say that real quick. Mm-hmm. Like, particularly when you think of the African-American story. Where right. people, their parents, their grandparents, their great, 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 great grandparents 
was born mm -hmm. or was born in America or was brought and then from Africa, Africa and that's home and everybody right. else from there on was born there but the country itself you don't belong here get right. out of here right that's right there's no way to right. describe that pain no I can't even imagine and I can't even believe we're like oh, we're at the end of the there's so much more we can talk about we <laughs> gotta have you on again but a day I want you to tell people how they can find you because we only have like yeah like a minute left I mean I can't okay. wait for your book I can't wait for your book I'm so excited <laughs> to read you. it thank you for your support thank you for having me here I love this I love being able to share well people can find me on lifecoachade.com lifecoachade.com mm -hmm. and I invite people to sign up for my newsletter and I also want to give an offer you know they'll see some of my services the website needs mm -hmm. updating but they can on my coaching pages or see my services page if anybody I'll say the first five people who mm -hmm. want to work with me and say they heard my interview I am gonna give them because I got a postcard from the universe not to the universe from oh, the universe you gotta, you gotta wrap it up <laughs> Go find a day. 50% 50, 50 discount. That's it. Go find Yay. you. Thank you, Melissa. <laughs> Thank you. I love you. Thank you for listening to love Postcards to the Universe with Melissa <laughs> creating the life you crave. Thanks for listening. Wishing everybody a wonderful week. God bless America. Peace.